So if you've had problems running pppawn in Python, the good news is, is that there is a C++ implementation of it that's available right now. And it's also super simple to set up. So this is the main project page. And basically what they stated in here was this is the C++ rewrite of it. Uh, there's a couple of features here. We got a smaller binary size. A wide range of CPU architectures and systems are supported. You can run this on a lot of the lower powered uh, CPUs, such as the Raspberry Pis and all of that other type of stuff. Also, it says that it runs faster under Windows because it added a more accurate sleep time. And just an hour ago, there was this commit right here, which basically was to fix some of the problems that Windows Defender was having. So looking at the rest of the features here, just automatically restart when it fails at stage one. And then there's a couple of places where you can download the nightly build and so forth. Now you can download the nightly build and obviously there's instructions in here on how to make this yourself. But again, for Windows users, there is a very easy way if you take advantage of this project right here called PP Pawn Loader. So if we look at this, it says that this is a Windows front end program that is based off of PP Pawn. And then there's just a couple of different requirements here. Now, looking at the releaser here, what is interesting is, is that they went ahead and replaced uh, the Python version that they were using with PP Pawns that came from the rewrite project that I was mentioning just right here. So this person. So to get started, all you really need to do is to just click right here and just go ahead and download it and then run it on your computer. Now, back over on your PlayStation 4, 11.0 in this instance, that is not jailbroken yet, you are going to want to make sure that you do come back over here and go to network, and then set up an internet connection. Make sure this is targeted for LAN, and then we're gonna go custom again. We're going to go PPPoE, you do need to give it a user ID and then a password. I just give it G and G. Hit next and we're gonna go automatic for DNS, automatic for MTU, and then do not use for proxy settings. And I'm just gonna go back here and at this point, make sure you connect up your PlayStation 4 with an ethernet cable to the computer that you're currently going to run this script on. And once you run the tool, you will see that it will have an interface by default. Mine, again, on Windows is just going to be Ethernet. And then for the firmware, it's going to be 11. Now, if you use another firmware, you just need to select that. And then I do recommend you have auto retry put on here. This, so I'm going to hit apply here. Now, before we do anything, let me just go ahead and show you that there is a settings that you can click on right up here and it brings you to this dialog. So you can save these settings. Also, you can update it through this button right here. So if you just press that, it does a quick check and it makes sure everything's up to date. So this is another reason why I really like this solution. So go ahead and you can click apply on that. And if you do want to toggle between C and the console, you can just press this button right here and it will toggle between those. So the next thing that it wants is your stage two file. So obviously the one that you would more than likely want to run would be the one from Sistro, which is Goldian. That's as simple as going to this page right here, scrolling down to assets and then downloading this 7z file. Now I am aware that if you didn't download that, you could absolutely go into the PP pawn folder in wherever you installed that into, and you would be able to see some of the payloads there. But I would say just to always be on the latest version, I would probably go over to that gold hen site like I did. Now, one other thing, since we are already in here, you will want to come over here to drivers and make sure that you do install NPCAP 1.79 already included in this package, just double click on it and run it, and then everything should work perfectly well. 
Next, it does want to know where is your stage two file. So I just extracted mine to my desktop right here just to make this super easy. And you can see that there is a stage two folder and then there is a file called stage two and then there's a 9.0 and 11.0. I'm going to grab the 11.0. Again, this is the file that came from Sistro. And obviously, if you haven't done it already, you will need to copy goldhen.bin over to the root of a USB drive if this is your very first time running it. Again, if you've already ran this before, then goldhen.bin is already stored on the local PS4 hard disk drive. And now let's just switch back to the PlayStation 4. Okay, we are going to go ahead and press the test internet connection, as well as we're going to press start on the loader. And we can see right here, it says waiting. It says configuring. It's going through the heap grooming, pin into CPU. So this is the lightning fast speed that you do get by using the C++ version. This is absolutely faster than when I was running Ubuntu on the so-called metal. So it looks like that's going to be it, that this one is going to do it. So we're at stage three. And then obviously the last thing is going to be stage four, which is going to load gold in. So that is a massive improvement from my testing so far. I definitely recommend this method going forward. Now, one thing you can do is, is that if you do want to see the console output, you could just click on that and you have full visibility of everything that was traditionally coming out of that, you know, command prompt console before. So anyway, definitely a project that I recommend.